What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Today's episode, I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm going to do a voiceover uh, to the video here. So basically, I've taken my Paul Reed Smith. It's a um, 245SE. And I wanted to give it a facelift. And I love this guitar. It is it is a fantastic player. Uh, but, you know, it's just a little maple veneer. Just something nice. Uh, and so what I wanted to do was kind of and just kind of strip it down and, and do something different. So I went with a car wrap, uh, you know, vinyl wrap, whatever you want to call it. And I found a color and a style that I was looking for. I thought would be fun. Uh, it was about $26. I got a two foot by five foot piece. And uh, I figured we would use that, cut it down to fit and then go from there. So as you can see, I'm pretty much taking off all the hardware, desoldering the pickups so that I can... Uh, remove them from the body, take all the pots and, uh, you know, get them out of the way. I used some blank caps there, as you can see. Uh, they're a quarter inch plugs just to kind of fill the holes since I only use two volume knobs. And then here I'm wiping it down with a, um, a rubbing alcohol uh, just to kind of help uh, clean the surface. And then I'll uh, kind of dry it off a little bit. I'll spray some of the uh, Dunlop number 65 cleaner kind of keep going with there with it so then once I got everything kind of you know cleaned up and everything the kit uh, with the vinyl came with a adhesive prep uh, and this just kind of helps promote uh, adhesive sticking uh, to the back side of the vinyl then I got my heat gun out and then as you can see I went with a purple camo just something different do a quick trace on the guitar cut it out and then uh, I did You'll kind of notice here where I mark it with my X-Acto knife. I kind of messed it up and I cut it a little too close to the neck. So there is a spot that I messed up on. But overall, I'm really pleased with uh, kind of how well it came out. Uh, if you're going to do this, I strongly recommend taking your time. Go extremely slow. Uh, I got a little impatient. I was getting very frustrated kind of later on in the video. You may or may not see it with the... Uh, the vinyl here but overall it's it's a very smooth process it just i just take your time there's a lot of air bubbles so you have to constantly pick it up put it down pick it up put it down smooth it out and it's just it's very frustrating at times um so kudos to those guys who do this for a living uh installing it on automotive because there's no way i could do it i just no that is not for me so I think this is probably the largest project I will do, uh, installing the wrap. Now there's about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch overhang over the body, just so that this way it does go over and I had some kind of room to grab. But you can kind of see it right along there, along that neck uh, where I messed it up. I, I cut it at the wrong angle. So I heat it up with the heat gun. It does tighten back up if you stretch it out. So that way it does shrink into place a little bit and... Uh, I pushed it in with my thumb just to kind of get the cavities for the pickups to, to outline a little better. Start trimming it right here. Coming about uh, the edge of it. Just The razor came with the kit, and it wasn't the sharpest, but it, it was definitely better than the X-Acto knife I had. I, I needed to change the blade. I ended up doing that later on. But I uh, just kind of traced around the edge of the guitar, and I went at a slight angle so this way it wouldn't get caught on my arm when I was playing. Uh, so that way it doesn't, you know, peel the vinyl off. And, and the cool part about this vinyl, so there is an adhesive on the back, um, but it's it's not super sticky. It's sticky enough to, to stay in place, but it's if you decide you don't like it or you want to change it up or you want to go back to the original, you know, laminate top or whatever, vinyl veneer, you just peel it off, clean it, and you're good to go. So there's no permanent install to this, which makes it a super awesome, you know, fun little project to do. So we started cutting it out for the uh, stud post for the bridge. And then here I'm poking out the holes for uh, where the potentiometers go. Again, I only use two volumes. I use a neck and a bridge volume. So for me, it's it was really easy. Start installing the pickups. Uh, left them in the pickup rings to make it easier. And clean off some fingerprints and sweat and whatnot. Go ahead and put those back in. Now the pickups that I have in this guitar are my Arcane Ink 57 Experience PAF pickups. They're an Alnico 2, 
and they come in somewhere around seven and a half, eight K on the uh, resistance. They're absolutely lovely pickups. Love the sound of them. Um, as you can see, it's a very simple two pots. I use um, Dunlop Super Pots. Uh, Royce over at um, Deviant Guitars actually got me hooked on those. I was just using regular, you know, old school CTS pots. Uh, but those super pots are really nice. They're super easy to use. Uh, and my soldering skills are subpar, so it doesn't take very long to heat the back of those up to get the solder to stick, which is very convenient. Um, that's my cheapo soldering station. And looks like I'm doing the bridge pickup. I do have a treble blade installed on my neck pickup. Uh, just so that as I roll it down, it doesn't get too muddy. Uh, let's see what we got. Reinstall the input jack. Reinstalling the neck pickup switch. Or the pickup selector switch. I use that ESP spanner wrench, as you can see. And on the back side of that, I will usually put uh, like a painter's tape or something. So this way it doesn't scratch up the finish on any of the guitars. Uh, let's see. Putting on my knobs back in. Of course, I had to use blue painter's tape on one because it didn't quite want to stick. Retracing the edges of the guitar just to kind of clean up any more edges. And you could also take a um, super fine, like a micro mesh pad to polish your frets with. You can actually take that and rub it along the edge, and that'll smooth over the, um, the vinyl once it's installed. So here we uh, pretty much start putting in new strings. I like to pre-stretch all my strings. All right, so uh, let's talk about setup. Um, I gotta find all my stuff here. Uh, it's up here somewhere, there it is. Uh, so we're looking for a string gauge. Now I have the Broke, Bar Q, whatever you wanna call it. Um, it's the cheapest one on Amazon. It looks identical to the Stumac. Nothing against Stumac, their stuff is extremely expensive. Uh, so for your budget or everyday enthusiast or whatever, this would, this is fine. Um, now I ride my low E string uh, about 0 .06 inches um, or a 60th of an inch. And so a lot of times, most guitars when they come uh, pre-set up, you know, generally they're kind of in that 0 .07, uh, which is a good starting point. Uh, if they come any higher than that, there was no no setup was done. Uh, it's really unfortunate. Uh, some guitars are that way. My Kramer was that way. A lot of people are kind of like, oh, you shouldn't complain. Uh, I got a standard. I'm gonna stick with my standard. Um, all of my Gibsons have been set up properly. My all my PRS, my SE PRS, uh, which is made in uh, Korea, uh, came set up. It was at a, a 0.68, uh, yeah, or 0 0.6, yeah, 0 0.68. Um, my CE was set up. I, I don't have a guitar. Um, excluding my fender uh jag stain that one was not set up but i bought it at a pawn shop back when i was like 13 so that was 20 some years ago uh so anyways let's uh let's go ahead and get to the setup shall we so i like to set mine up in the playing position and what i'll do in this scenario uh, i might be able to all right so we're gonna set the string height or the or the action and the way i do mine is i set it um based on the 12th fret I check my string gauge to the 12th fret and I will raise or lower the bridge uh, from that point on. Uh, so here we were tuning the guitar uh, to set the intonation. Uh, this can be a bit tricky, especially for beginners. Um, this is one of the steps that I feel a thousand plus dollar guitar should be set properly from the factory. Uh, but to do so, what you'll do is you'll, um, if you don't already know, you'll set your uh, 12th fret harmonic and you will it's easier on a strobe tuner but you'll set your 12th fret harmonic and then press down on the 12th fret and as long as they on the strobe tuner do not move uh, when you do both then your intonation is properly set uh, if it is sharp then you will adjust your saddle either forwards or backwards I don't remember actually what direction um, I think if it's sharp then you want to shorten the saddle and if it's flat you want to lengthen the saddle uh, so did we did some play testing just to make sure the pickups were working uh, and they actually were not well the neck wasn't there was a, a ground issue 
So I had to re-solder the ground on the uh, neck pickup. Uh, and then just kind of checking my pickup height, making sure it was set properly. Uh, the guitar turned out beautiful overall. I'm really pleased with it. You know, it was the first time using rap on a guitar. I've done it on my amp, my PV5105. Uh, I mean, um, it's got the same company, same wrap, uh, different color uh, on the front, that red camo. But uh, so that's the uh, pickup height tool that I use. Uh, it's a, a little measurement ruler. And I measure from the top of the pull piece to the bottom of the string. And it's about an eighth of an inch. But uh, anyways, tell me what you guys think in the comments. Um, you know, keep an eye out and we'll... Uh, We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.